So here we go. Now we got Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson here, who's the founder of the English Defense League. He was outside a court in London, merely videographing. Inside, you had a number of Muslims who had been accused and were guilty of sex grooming gangs. Now, what these guys do, these sex grooming gangs, they go to little girls and get them hooked on narcotics and heavy drugs, heroin, and they, they end up getting them killed. And this is prevalent. I, they've got thousands of these cases, and Tommy Robinson is out there just standing there with a camera photographing from the outside of the courtroom, and the English didn't like that, so they threw him into prison for 13 months. We have a written First Amendment. We're the only country in the history of the 6,000 years of recorded history of the world that has a written First Amendment, and it's under assault now with all this phony hate speech and stuff, too. So clip number one, clip number one. Intolerance and anger have gripped parts of white America. Assaults on Muslim Americans are increasing. Your prophet is perverted. An explosion at a Bloomington Islamic Center. Send them back to the dustbin they come from and let them go sit on a camel. I almost died just because I was Muslim. We saw a number of attacks of mosques, Muslim women and men across the country completely skyrocket. Don't Trying to this. impose the Sharia. This investigation traces the groups that promote Islamophobia, the fear of Muslims. Women raped on the streets of Germany because of unvetted Islamic refugees. Sharia law fully implemented, whether it's Europe or here in America, this is the goal. We expose the tactics used to influence social media. Some of these numbers are staggering. So what we're seeing now, uh, Tommy Robinson, in this first picture here, right in the middle, underneath my fingers, Tommy Robinson's getting has been thrown in jail, prison, for 13 months. He probably will somehow, the Muslims will get to him and beat him to death. Now, what was going on, these little girls here, we've got Lucy Lowe. She's 16 years old. She was 16 years old. She was murdered with her mother, Eileen, and her 17-year-old sister, Sarah, in a house fire set by her sexual abuser, Ajar Ali Mahmoud. Now, this is part of Sharia law. Remember, we've got under Christianity, true religion is taking care of widows and orphans, James 1.27. But under the Quran, true religion, Surah 860, true religion is creating widows and orphans, that is, waging war, jihad, and terrorizing the infidel, which is exactly what happened to these two little girls. This girl here, right here, her name is Vicky Round. She was abused by a sex gang that got her hooked on crack when she was 12 years old and heroin by the time she was 14 and she was dead at 20. So what they do is they get them on, on, on uh, um, drugs and then they, they rape them. These are little, little girls and it's going on all over in the UK and it's being covered up. And Tommy Robinson merely took a camera and, and showed the courtroom. He didn't show any of the proceedings or anything. And the English government said, hey, we warned you about this, so now you, uh, you're in contempt of court. Boom, 13 months in jail. Okay, clip number two. Clip number two. Invited Islamic refugees. Sharia law fully implemented, whether it's Europe or here in America. This is the goal. We exposed the tactics used to influence social media. Some of these numbers are staggering. Every day he's pumping this stuff out to huge audiences. And we reveal their connections to members of the Trump administration. I was... There, this guy here, he's in here defending Sharia law. Look, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to learn sometime in the next five to 55 years. You, you are going to learn. You or your children or your grandchildren or great-grandchildren, you're going to learn that it is different. It is not multicultural. 
under the concept of Christianity, true religion is taking care of widows and orphans. Jesus Christ. What could be more important than what Jesus Christ taught, Jesus the Messiah, that we are to take care of the weakest? That would be widows and orphans. Why? Because when you take care of widows and orphans, you take care of everybody. But under Islam was Surah 860, which is the motto of the Muslim Brotherhood, true religion is creating widows and orphans. I'm showing this clip because the Muslims in America and Europe and in England want Sharia law. They want Tommy Robinson locked up because Tommy Robinson is telling the truth about these little girls being drugged, kidnapped, raped, and murdered. He's telling them, and the English court which has fallen in love with the silliness of Sharia law. This is the Prime Minister of England. Of course, it's a cartoon. She's got her devil horns. It's Theresa May. That's the same gal that said, I cannot go to the U.K. because I'm considered to be a terrorist because I have this TV show and I talk about Islam and I tell the truth about Islam. Clip number three. Clip number three. From the election. Do you believe Donald Trump is an Islamophobe? Yes, I certainly do. You need to go and leave our country. If Muslims are attacking us, if Muslims are a threat, what do we do? The logical conclusion is violence. So now they're coming back in. The Muslims are coming back there. Remember, there's one goal of Islam, and that's to take over the whole world and to institute Sharia law. The overarching purpose of education in Islam is to send only boys to madrasas to beat them into memorizing the Quran and turning these little jihadists throughout the world to conquer every country in the world and then transformed them into 7th century Arabia under the regime of Muhammad himself, thereby causing, creating the highest degree of hostility, disorder, slavery, poverty, and misogyny. They don't care how they do it. They don't care if they do it by jihad of killing people or lying through the four words of Islam, Takiyah, Kitman, Maruna, and Tariyah. Four different ways to lie to convince boneheads like Theresa May that Islam is good. Theresa May, that Islam is good. Now here's another another um, prime minister of the UK, Winston Churchill, the old bulldog of World War II. Now Winston Churchill suffered under Islam when he was a young man. He did not like Islam because he understood Islam. Theresa May, not so bright. She's probably getting a ton of money from the Muslims, and she's out there saying that Islam is wonderful and great and good. Winston Churchill saved England in World War II, restoring, free, uh, keeping free speech so the Nazis couldn't take them over. By the way, the Nazis used the Muslim Brotherhood, as we've shown on a many, many of our shows, used the Muslim Brotherhood in order to prosecute the uh, Holocaust murdering the Jews. Muslim child rape gangs, Muslim child rape gangs, and that's what you get when you believe in Islam. When you believe and you aid in a bet and you help Islam, you're going to get Muslim child rape gangs. And since the Muslims have been taking so much control over England, and in fact, the mayor of Ing of uh, London is Sadiq Khan. He's a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. And when you do that, then you have violent crimes increased by 40%. The hospital floors in that one hospital in London are covered with blood from all the stabbings and the knife wounds. So 19% violent crime goes up as soon as Islam shows. Sex crimes go up 19%. And that would be your sex grooming gangs, rape, uh, beating, being hostile to women and things of that nature. You have knife crime goes up 20%. They don't have that many guns in England. The other day in Belgium, 
a Muslim attacked two women police officers and stabbed them to death with a knife. Knife crimes. Then he grabbed their pistols and started shooting people. Knife crimes, pistol crimes. Islam, Islam, wage war and terrorize, wage war and terrorize the infidel, create widows and orphans. Under Christianity, true religion is taking care of widows and orphans because they have nothing at all to offer people. Widows and orphans are generally very poor, have no money, need a lot of help, and Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, pointed out under the Apostle James, James 1.27, true religion is taking care of widows and orphans. Under Islam, true religion, Surah 860, is causing widows and orphans. Uh, stalking and harassment in the UK is up 30%. Theft and burglaries are up 11%. And sex grooming gangs are up 64%. Thank you, Islam. And, of course, there you have the knife. They will wage war and terrorize the infidel. We will protect widows and orphans. They create widows and orphans, and we take care of widows and orphans. Clip number four. Living in America, everyone believes in God. Bacon. I like bacon. In God, I pray for those that are going to eat today that they would bless the food as well. In Jesus' name, amen. This is your wake up call. Be advised, you got Muslims around here. They can bomb for their God. Reuben Israel is a street preacher, a self styled defender of. Under the First Amendment of the United States, he can go out there and he can do what he's doing. I've been out with him a number of times. I support him 100%. And you know what? Pretty soon, within 5 to 55 years, the Muslims are going to launch all-out attack on the United States, on Europe. And a lot of people right now saying, hey, this guy Klein, he's crazy, are going to wake up and say, whoa. Um, I archive all of these shows that I do. I keep the disc when I'm handing it, handed the disc. I keep each in an individual file with all of the different clips that I have with the URL. I have them saved on hard copy. I have them saved on my computer because I know in five to 55 years when Islam finally does completely erupt in the third great jihad or World War III, and I believe one-third of the world's population will be killed directly or indirectly as a result of Islam, that my children, my grandchildren, and their children will be able to look back at them when I'm long gone and dead and say, why didn't they listen? Why didn't they listen to this man? Clip number five. Clip number five. Trump's rhetoric has given license and space and fuel to Islamophobia. But at the same time, it did not invent it. It did not bring it about. So she's a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, and she's merely following um, the dictates of what did Muhammad do. And Muhammad, four words to lie, Takiyah, Kitman, Maruna, and Tariya. He also had al wala you must love, and Al-Wal, Bara, al wala you love the Muslim, you love Islam, you love Sharia, you love the Quran, and wal Bara, you hate the Christians, you hate the Jews, you hate the infidel. You hate anything that is not Islam. And in a court of law, if there's a case where a Muslim murders a Jew or a Christian, and it's clearly murder, the Muslim members of the jury have to vote to acquit, to acquit the Muslim. Because under Sharia Muslim law, the Muslim's always right. The Christian, the Jew, the infidel is always wrong. Why are the Christian, the Jew, the infidel, the Buddhist... Confucius, the Sikh, why are they always wrong? Because they rejected Allah. And rejecting Allah and Sharia law means you're automatically guilty, guilty, guilty if you're in some kind of a conflict with a Muslim. Clip number six. Clip number six. In one year, four of the leading anti-Muslim groups used the word Sharia on Twitter alone nearly 2,000 times. Some of these numbers are staggering. If we look at, say, Frank Gaffney, 
I mean, look, he's got a total of 1,204 here in a year. And that's just uh, the word Sharia. Every day he's pumping this stuff out to huge audiences. Repetition of message is what these groups survive with. That's what they need, is to make sure that people identify Sharia as being an inherently malevolent force and a threat to American way of life. No Sharia law! Islam is a fascist ideology. Frank Gaffney says Sharia. So what they're trying to prevent is little girls being abused, hooked on drugs, raped, and murder by Muslim child rape gangs. And Muslim child rape gangs and hooking little girls on drugs and raping them and then murdering them is okay under Sharia law. So when Frank Gaffney and those guys are talking about they don't want Sharia law, well, of course, they don't want Sharia law because Sharia law means they can come after your, your daughter, your wife, your niece, your mother, your grandmother. We've had a number of cases with older women over 70, over 80 years old have been beaten and raped by the Muslims. Clip number seven. Clip number seven. But this premise that Sharia is a threat is false. Sharia is just guidance to live an Islamic life. Sharia poses no more threat. I showed this guy last week. He's a, uh, a counterterrorism expert in the FBI. He's a buffoon. You know what? He's a moron. Come on. Why is everybody afraid to just say the truth? If you tell the truth, it is love. When they say, tell the truth in love, well, you know what? If your house is burning down and people are yelling at you, get out of the house, and you refuse to get out of the house, then sometimes being called a moron or stupid is pretty good. It gets you awakened. When I was a young kid in Marine Corps boot camp, they called us all kinds of names, and, hey, it didn't bother us a bit, and it got us to do what we were supposed to do. Clip number eight. Clip number eight. But for more than three decades, I have also had the tremendous fortune to travel the world. And as part of that experience, to learn about the goodness and beauty of Islam. As a college student in the 1970s, I spent a summer traveling through Indonesia, taking in the wonderful landscape, culture, and people of Java and Bali. Despite my long hair, my earring, and my obvious American appearance, I was welcomed throughout that country in a way that is reflected. That is the former leader of the CIA who voted for a communist candidate in 1965, John Brennan. He's five years younger than me and 100 times more stupid than me. The guy thinks Islam is the most wonderful thing in the world. Now, he was raised as a Jesuit. A lot of people don't understand the Jesuits, the Society, the Society of Jesus, were created by Loyola in Europe to murder the Reformers, the Protestants, who actually gave us the Cromwellian Civil War and helped England get their First Amendment and things of that nature. And then they passed that along through Blackstone, that Blackstone, the Ten Commandments, was the basis of our Constitution. And at the metaphysics of ontology, cosmology, and epistemology were the basis, the Christian basis, the axiology, the ethics of Christianity. True religion is taking care of widows and orphans as the basis of our liberties and freedoms in the United States. John Brennan is very dangerous. He, John Guandalo, a former FBI guy, thinks he converted to Islam. I don't know. Um, he may have. I'm, I'm not discounting it. I think John's a pretty sharp guy, and he's probably right on that. I, I don't have enough proof, but again, John's pretty sharp. He might be right. Um, but I do know that he is a very dangerous man and that he wants to institute Islam, Sharia law, into the United States. He's obviously unable to comprehend that Islam leads to sex grooming gangs taking these little girls, drugging them, raping them, killing them, turning these little girls into widows and orphans. He just doesn't understand. Okay, clip number nine. 
Clip number nine. As Muslims, you have seen a small fringe of fanatics who cloak themselves in religion, try to distort your faith, though they are clearly ignorant of the most fundamental teachings of Islam. Instead of finding the inherent dignity and decency in other human beings, they practice a medieval brand of intolerance. Instead of saving human lives, as the Quran instructs, they take innocent life. Instead of creating, they destroy, bombing mosques, schools, and hospitals. They are not jihadists, for jihad is a holy struggle. An effort the former leader of the CIA saying that Al-Qaeda is not true Islam. Hey, true Islam is Al-Qaeda. True Islam, Surah 860, wage war, terrorize the infidel. Use steeds of war, kill, kill them, <clears throat> Surah 929, kill the Christians, other, many, many other verses in the Quran to just kill, destroy, destroy, kill, hate, hate, hate. That's all Islam is. It's, it's so patently false for the leader of the FBI to get up there and say that. And, and again, I read this last week. I know that you can't read it, but before I was nine, I had learned a basic canon or the um, theology of Muslim life. It was me against my brother, me and my brother against our father, my family against my cousins, and the clan, the clan against the tribe, and the tribe against the world, and all of us Muslims against the infidel, all of us Muslims against the infidel, Leon Europe, the Hajj. And again, back to al wala and wal bara al wala to love Islam, to love Sharia, to love Jihad, to love sex-grooming gangs that rape little girls and kill them, to love knife stabbings by Muslims, to love suicide bombers, to love anything that the Muslims do, al wala It's real simple. It's the difference between Islam and Christianity. It's real simple. wal bara to hate anything not Sharia, to hate anything not Muslim, to hate anything not Islam. It's very easy to understand. By the way, we have a Muslim former army, United States Army captain, Muslim. He is a Muslim, running for Congress, and he says he's against Sharia law. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be a Muslim and be against Sharia law. Sharia law is what makes Muslims. Surah 860 is what makes Muslims. So, anytime a Muslim tells me he's a Muslim, then I automatically know, if he's a Muslim, that he supports this. And I also know that this congressman is engaged in lying, Takiyah, Kitman, Maruna, and Tariya. I know that for a fact, and I know he's here to infiltrate and to destroy us. Clip number... 14, clip number 14. Clip number 15. Welcome back. We're getting an exclusive report now. India today has accessed an Indian Army report that blows the lid of the covert funding to terror orchestrated by Pakistan through a Hawala syndicate. Now, the report also shows seriousness on the money given to commander of terrorists through a Western Union. The money is given to local terrorists or commanders as per their work, whether it's stone pelting, grenade throwing, weapon firing, or arms snatching. The L.E.T. The Very interesting. They're talking about that word Hawala. We've talked that. Uh, before Hawala is cash, it's underneath the banking system. It cannot be tracked by financial accounts, bank accounts, passwords. It cannot be tracked. It's over 14 centuries old. It predates Islam. Islam has always used Hawala to gather funds, to kill people. What they're talking about there is that Mexico wa it was very upset because of the Hawala system. The Hawala system of the narco um, cartels down in Mexico are working with ISIS and Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram down there. It's all the way from South America, Venezuela, up Central America, Mexico. And this Hawala system, how they will s skim cash off of uh, receipts that come into a uh, business, and then they take that money 
and they can transmit it without any kind of ability to track that money. And it's trillions of dollars every year. And what's pointed out in that article that Mexico is upset because the ISIS and Taliban were using that money that was found in Mexico and then moved over to India, to the Muslims in India, to attack and kill the people of India. So it's just a little bit more proof of wage war and terrorize the infidel to create widows and orphans and a Christian concept. True religion is taking care of widows and orphans. Clip number 10. Clip number 10. 10. Not just on issues of foreign policy, national security, and civil liberties that are of unique concern to you, but across the whole range of issues that affect your lives, as they do all Americans, from economic... Again, the former CIA leader loves Islam. Clip number 12. 12. Muslims living in the UK face a host of challenges. The most vulnerable members of our community struggle every day. They may live right next to us. You're hungry, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Get you some food, okay? Okay. But don't know where their next meal will come from. Our faith is misunderstood. Small differences can escalate quickly. For some of us, becoming Muslim. What they're talking about there is zakat, or taking the alms for the poor. Now, zakat, we know for a fact, even though John Brennan, whom I showed several times, the leader of uh, the CIA, who loves Islam, and he actually spoke at the terrorist group zakat, Z-A-K-A-T. They take 2.5% of earnings throughout the global community of uh, Muslims known as Ummah, and they take that 2.5%, which can be billions if not trillions of dollars, transmitted through Hawala, which I spoke about earlier, how they can send cash without being able to track it down or trace it. It's outside of the banking system. And they use that to wage war, to wage war, and to terrorize the infidel, and they come in and they are using Takiya, Kitman, Maruna, and Tariya to say, oh, we're evil, wicked people because we don't want to support alms for the poor. Well, we don't want to support alms used to fund suicide bombers and terrorists. That's exactly why I showed that. Clip number 13. 13. A United States Treasury Department report on terrorist financing last year said many militant groups in Pakistan fund their activities through proceeds from illegal businesses and charitable organizations. The report revealed that less number of money laundering cases were decided by the courts from the last couple of years. Even the crime teams have seized billions of dollars from the outfits. Annual Okay, so they're talking about Hawala, and they're talking about Zakat. They're talking about using charities, how to get that alms for the poor. Now, that's used in the United States. That was used to fund blowing up the World Trade Center, killing 3,000 Americans. It's in all 50 states of the United States. It's in all of our territories. It's in all of Europe, all of Asia, all of Africa, Russia. It is everywhere in the whole world because Islam, very simple, is based on Surah 860 to wage jihad and terrorize the infidel. Christianity is based on true religion is taking care of widows and orphans. I'll be back next week. God bless you all.